what's going on everybody welcome back to Turner Fishing oh I'm sorry I'm a little under the weather right now but there's my new journey a bonafide 107 rated capacity 400 pounds because you know I'm a big guy but I took her out the other day at Buffalo Creek ended up sticking a few so check that out and if you haven't already hit that red button down below Lake Mary's warming up guys it's about time to throw that frog frog and I'm ready alright guys first bite in the kayak Good one too. Come here, baby. Ah. That fish is so fat. <laughs> oh, check him out. Oh, shaky head. Look at me, dropping my rod in the water already. Don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh. Look how fat that fish is. It's probably like a, a good, let's see how long he is. It's like a 15 inch fish, but he probably weighs a good two pounds. Nice. All right, puppy. See you later, man. Thanks for biting. First bass on the kite. Woo! So, what I've done, I pulled back in this little pocket. It's got a creek running into it. Using an old black trick worm on a little cheap shaky head you buy. Like Academy. You get about 10 of them in a pack. The hooks are kind of flimsy, but it gets the job done. I don't know about the angle. Like, I can't really check the footage until I get home. So if y'all can't see nothing, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, that was awesome. It's gonna be real cool to catch a big one out of this thing. Pretty much just fishing lay downs, really. Working it really slow. The water's still really stained here on Murray, all this rain. But the thing is, I mean, it ain't rained in like two days, so the water's going down. So they're not going to be in the dirt, dirt. They're going to be pushed out just a little bit. So that's really what I'm focusing on is the laydowns, like, like what's in front of me. I want to focus on the outside of them, not on the inside. There's number two. How big this one is. Around the same size. I'll quit it. Quit it. All right. Two. That one ain't as fat as the other one. Around the same size though. You need to eat more. Oh, that's a keeper though. There's two keepers back here. Now, the thing I'm figuring out, let's let this guy go and I'll talk to you. But the thing that I'm noticing on my depth finder, it ain't reading like the depth or anything like it's supposed to do. But the water's colder back here so i don't understand why i'm getting bit back here yet i know the water's stained so they should be on structure I mean, i understand that but at the same time it's 55 degrees towards where i put in versus 52.8 back here i 
but as y'all can see my depth finder is not reading the bottom at all and I don't move the transducer up and down I don't understand it I might have to I want to go fish some offshore stuff in the kayak today so I'm probably gonna have to google it here in a little bit and see if I can figure it out because I want to try out my anchor and all that stuff but I'm gonna keep fishing this little cove right here I mean I already caught two keepers that's good all I'm doing is working to shake your head really slow I know I don't have any line on this reel but it'll be alright <laughs> I don't think nobody's gonna spool me with 15 pound teeth another thing I, I like about this kayak is I mean if I was in the boat you know I'd be making trolling motor noise and all that trying to stay out of the wind which I'm doing now but if I can position the kayak right it'll push me in the wind and I only have to use the paddle to slow down just a little bit so definitely will increase your bite especially in the clearer water right now in the stained water I mean they're so tight to cover they're not really gonna be bothered by noise too much but I'm gonna fish this little area right here and I'm probably gonna paddle out and fish some points if I can figure out this depth finder Ooh, first time getting hung <laughs> Let's go get it. Alright. I'm at my first offshore. Well, not really offshore, but I'm on a point. Uh, so let's try out this little anchor thing. So I want it at the front of the boat. Because uh, the wind's blowing this way. This is up there. All right, now make sure all that's off. Just let her down. So I've been working all these points. I mean, obviously, having a depth finder would probably make it a lot easier. But, you know, we got to deploy the anchor. Kept me in place. Got to ride a couple waves. But, I threw the A-rig, spinnerbait, crankbait. Didn't really get a bite. So, go back to what we were getting bit on. I mean, these little pockets ain't really in the back of the creek. I don't know if that's the deal or the juice. But, we'll work all these laydowns real slow and I'll go around to this little cove right here maybe pick one up but I don't think I'm gonna paddle too much further because my arms getting a little tired <laughs> but all in all I mean this is what I bought this for you know stealth fish it slow if I can figure out this depth finder I'll be able to find some bait and maybe catch some more but you know who needs a depth finder we already caught two keepers that's a good day to me especially first day out here on on the yak hashtag yak club there's one all the way in the back I mean I am in the dirt oh oh I got hung dang it This limb. I mean, that one didn't feel that big, but it's still a bite. I ain't gonna be able to get over there even in the kayak. I really don't want to because I got that bite. So I'm probably just gonna pop it off and retie. But it's, it's gotta be like one foot of freaking water back there. Pop this off real quick. Retie another shaky head. 
Oh, there we go. Okay, it was just a lamb. <laughs> Alright. So one trend I'm finding, you got pockets that look like this. I'm seeing like, not a lot of shad, but there's shad coming up, hitting the surface. Which is probably why these bass that I've been catching are, you know, the couple bites I've had when I throw way back in there above trees and all this other stuff. <laughs> I know y'all couldn't see that, but I just threw over a big old tree. But I mean, like, I'll show y'all how deep it is right here. It's like, maybe three foot right here so probably a foot up there get y'all turned around so y'all can see too but i seen a shad come up right on that limb over there so yeah, there went one right there i don't know if y'all can see that but i mean that's the thing with dirty water i mean i, I can make a whole video on it if y'all want but a bass likes to see. You know, if they ain't got nowhere to see, they'll get used to it and just use their lateral lines. But if they can get up shallow and see just a little bit better, I mean, that's where they're gonna go. But they also don't wanna get ambushed, so they get scared and they're gonna hide. Well, not really hide, but they're gonna get on a piece of cover, like all this wood right here. And that's where they're gonna stay. So when the bait passes them, you know, they got the wood on their tail most of the time. So as soon as your bait goes down there, they're going to thump it. So really, like I'm doing right now, I mean, I'm not working it super slow. But when I hit the target, I'm making sure that I'm getting the lure at least a lot wet beside every little piece of cover that I can. I mean, I'm working every little area as slow as I can, but methodical and making the right cast speeds it up a lot. Like, this little pocket right here has got a lot of trash, so it may not be the best thing. I'm going to fire one more way in the back across that limb. I mean, you honestly just never know. If you haven't already, consider becoming a Patreon. And remember, guys, for just $5, and if you DM me on Instagram, you get a shout-out in the next video. Yee!